I'm working on some projects all at the same time that tie into each other, so this will be sort of a project update on a couple of things at once. One of the projects is I want to get a PS4 game controller working with an ESP32 so I can control hardware. So I'm using this ESP32 breakout dev board I made a while ago. And I'm using the Arduino BluePad32 libraries and board files, which can recognize several different Bluetooth controllers, but I'm going to be working with PS4. I'll be going more into this project in the future, so for now I'll put a link in the description about how to get BluePad32 going. Right now I have it set up with eight outputs to go to this LED indicator board so I can see if I have the controller working. If this were connected to a serial monitor, I'd also be able to see the status of all of these controls, including any gyro positioning. But for now, I have it set so that four of these LEDs will respond to the D-pad. The other four LEDs will respond to these buttons over here. So to pair this, you hold down the PlayStation button and share until the LED on the controller shows that it's paired. So it's blue now, meaning it's paired. So I changed the lighting so we can see better. So up, down, left, right, and then these four buttons have an LED responding. So that seems to be working. And if I want to unpair, I hold those same two controller buttons and eventually the light goes out, so now I am no longer controlling those LEDs. One of the goals with this is to be able to use this as a wireless controller for a bunch of retro systems. In this case, for example, Coleco and Atari 2600 are where I'm going to start, although I'm not ready in a project yet. But both of these use the D-sub 9 pin style connector along with a whole bunch of other older game systems and home computers. Even if the pinouts are not compatible, some are partly compatible at least, but a lot of them were using the D-Sub 9. So I want to eventually have a project where instead of controlling LEDs, I want to be using this Bluetooth controller to go into the joystick ports of various old systems. So that led me to go digging through the old obsolete computer cable bin, and I have more cables than this. I need a 9-pin, 1-to-1 straight-through cable, but some of the ones I have are only going to have TXRX and ground for PC serial communication. Some of them may be crossover TXRX null modem cables. I thought I would use this cable testing system here to help me figure out which ones are usable. Of course, I can just get a multimeter and do a continuity check, but I ultimately want to add functions to this tester anyway. So I made a breakout board with today's sponsor, PCBWay. These boards have nine header pins, and I put the D-sub-9 footprint on both sides of the board, and I labeled pins 1 through 9 on both sides of the board because then, depending if I need a male or female 9 pin, I just put it on either top or bottom side and put the header pins wherever I want so I can plug this into a breadboard, have the correct connector, and be able to see what the pin numbers are. So when I'm ready to use this in any kind of project, not just old video game stuff, but even RS-232 serial port stuff, or if I just simply need some sort of robust interconnection between two things I'm prototyping, I can just use a serial cable. So this can have lots of good uses regardless, but I'm going to need these near term for video game stuff. So here we have a female cable. So I would get the male connector, plug that in, then it just goes to a breadboard ready to use. And having these boards also allows me to dock these into that cable tester over here. So in the meantime, I can use it to check all these cables and see which one will meet my needs. On this cable test platform, I've been experimenting with a TFT display so I can use the built-in OLED or the TFT. But this has its own issues. I don't know if it's because I'm not 
doing correct software. For example, if I move the rotary encoder, the text here slowly peels on screen when it's more instant up here. But aside from that, it's running. So I added a new test function, which is going to look at nine pins and expect them to be a one-to-one -one pin connection. So pin one goes to one all the way up to nine goes to nine. So I should be able to plug in various D sub nine pin cables and just see if it says pass, it means all nine pins go one to one. First, I'll run the test with nothing plugged in, trying to zoom in to get a better look. It's failing open on all pins one through nine. And I think I found a few more software bugs in this tester as well. Like when it fails short, it starts out saying there's a short on pin one, even if there's not but then it'll report the correct shorts after the first report. I don't know if that bug was always there or if I introduced it when messing with the code. So I'm gonna plug in this D sub nine and try not to break anything. So I'll run the test again. So this is failing open on a bunch of pins, not pin five, and it's reporting some short circuits on most of the pins. So I think what that means is this is not wired one-to-one. -one. If it said pin 5 is okay, I think pin 5 is ground when it's a serial cable for a computer. So this might be some sort of crossover or else some special purpose cable. Now I have a smaller cable. I'll run this one. So the fail report with a bunch of opens on this one, it looks like it's okay with pin 5 and a couple of others, which sounds like a normal TXRX ground sort of cable connection. And these pin numbers, again, in this tester, it's relative to what's connected up here. Physically, pin 1 on this header on the tester, it doesn't mean pin 1 of a D sub 9. And with this being a quirky setup and fragile, it takes time to get this plugged in and to run the test and then interpret the result. If this was a finalized project and everything was more stable, it's easier to plug things in. It would go a lot faster and be better than a multimeter. I'll try another cable, run the test, and this one said pass. That means all nine pins are connected one to one. Nothing is shorted to any other pin. So this is the one I'd be looking for for these upcoming Bluetooth game controller experiments. Now I need to do more work on this Bluetooth ESP32 controller interface and start working on some sort of electrical interface so that hardware can imitate various different controllers. And using the proper connector and cable, I can hook up hardware to these game systems and use the Bluetooth wireless controller.